Good afternoon, Dunkirk and Fredonia listeners, and welcome to High Noon Friday, Fredonia's longest-running variety radio program. Brought to you by WCVF 88.9 The Voice and WDVL 89.5 The Inferno. I'm Alex Irwin. And I'm Hunter Halterman. Today's episode is available streaming worldwide at FredoniaRadio.com. Coming up, we will have news, sports, and weather. But first, campus news. Tonight at 6 p.m., Fredonia Radio Systems will be hosting its Halloween lock-in scavenger hunt. Show up in groups of three to four and partake in a scavenger hunt across campus for the chance to win prizes. A costume contest will also be held. Afterwards, at 8 p.m., FRS will be showing an award-winning student-made short film. The Cryptid Cast vs. the Goopy Ganker will hit the screens in McEwen G24. Concessions such as cotton candy and popcorn will also be available for purchase. The film was directed by SUNY Fredonia alums Jackson DiCarlo and Ben Anderson and has received international attention at the Keynes Film Festival in France. This Sunday, the Make You and Hall television studio will be transformed into a haunted house. Students in the Department of Communications Ambassadors program are heading the event. The attraction will feature microphones and lights to create an immersive Halloween experience. All students are welcome to walk the haunted house on Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. Right after the Haunted House, Sound Services will be hosting Rocktoberfest. This Sunday from 6 to 9 p.m. in the NPR, bands such as St. Blind, Relentless Moisture, and Cooler will be performing. Snacks, pizza, and refreshments will be served, and the event is free to everyone. There will also be a costume contest, so be sure to arrive in your best costume for a chance to win prizes. Thank you very much, Alex. Today, we'll be having our classically chaotic segment, Trivia, slightly after 12. We'll also be listening to a few of our weekly segments, such as How Can I Help You, Just Me Unplugged, and the Local Lowdown Schemata. Let's start off with our local news update prepared by Cosio, followed by our sports update prepared and read by Trevor, and then our weather update with Izzy. What's going on, Cosio? Good afternoon, Dunkirk and Fredonia listeners. I am your Fredonia Radio Systems News Director, Cassio Fonseca, here with your High Noon Friday local news update. In local news for this week, Commissioners Luz E. Torres and Brian C. Abram of the Chautauqua County Board of Elections have announced early voting dates, times, and locations for the November 8th general election. Chautauqua County will open four poll sites for early voting, the Chautauqua County Fairgrounds, the Chautauqua Mall, the Robert H. Jackson Center, and the Board of Elections Office, Torres said. The Chautauqua County Fairgrounds early voting site is at the 4-H Building and Ag and Expo Center, 1089 Central Ave in Dunkirk. The Chautauqua Mall early voting site is through the main entrance, 318 East Fairmount Avenue, Lakewood. The Robert H. Jackson Center is the newest site, debuting in 2021 as part of a new law change. Voters can enter through the main doors off Pendergast Avenue, with the address of that building at 305 East 4th Street in Jamestown. Finally, the Board of Elections Office is located in the Hall R. Clothier Building at the County Complex in Mayville, 7 North Erie Street. Each location will have signage that will indicate the entrances to the poll sites. All registered voters in Chautauqua County are able to visit any one of these four early voting poll sites to cast their ballot early. All four sites will be open the same hours. Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday and Tuesday from noon to 8, and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The dates this year go from Saturday to Sunday, November 6th. Early voting runs for nine days, beginning 10 days before the general election. And early voting is not available on Monday, November 7th. In other local news, road construction in downtown Fredonia is currently ongoing, and the village warns of some traffic delays happening today. Paving work will be occurring today at the intersection of Temple Street and Main Street, according to a notice sent by the village government Wednesday morning. Expect delays while work is being completed. It is encouraged to find an alternate route if possible. Traffic in downtown Fredonia has already navigated construction near the four-way intersection, which also includes Water Street, throughout the month of October. Workers have been installing pedestrian-friendly bump-outs into the roadway at the crosswalks. This has led to occasional lane closures on Main Street. This work is part of a long-running project in downtown Fredonia, often referred to by village officials as the Downtown Place-Making Project. It has also included various improvements to Barker Commons, which borders the intersection. 
And finally, what's this? We've got another surprise campus news update from Jazzman Josh Ribicove. This October 29th, you should check out Kaylee Zabolska's Senior Trumpet Recital at 4 p.m. in Roush Recital Hall. She'll be performing two portraits by Joseph Turin and Halsey Stevens' Sonata for Trumpet and Piano. Kaylee wants you to know that the Halsey Stevens Sonata has been a work in progress for a few semesters now, and she's wanted to play it since she first heard it in her senior year of high school. Once again, that is Kaylee Zybolska's Senior Trumpet Recital at 4 p.m. in Roush Recital Hall. That is all for local news this week. Have a wonderful weekend, Fredonia. Trevor, what's going on in sports? Good afternoon, people of Fredonia and Dunkirk. My name is Trevor Howard, your sports director here at Fredonia Radio Systems, here with your High Noon Friday sports update. Well, the Buffalo Bills are back from their bye week to host the Green Bay Packers for Sunday night football this week. The Packers are 0-6 in their team's history while playing in Buffalo and are 3-4 on the season, led by a struggling Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. The Bills are 5-1 and and look to increase their lead in the AFC. Tickets for this one are as low as, and eh, not so low, as $350 on StubHub and Ticketmaster. The Bills and Packers will play on national television at 820 on NBC. In the NHL, it's safe to say the Sabres cooled off after their red-hot start. After going 3-0 on the Western Road Trip, the Sabres lost 5-1 in Seattle and 3-2 at home against the division rival Montreal Canadiens. The Sabres host the Blackhawks this Saturday at 7 o'clock p.m. Game 1 of the World Series begins tonight at 7.05 between the Astros and Phillies. Verlander will start on the mound for the Astros, while Austin Nola will start on the mound for the Phils. This will be the first time the Astros and Phillies met in the postseason since the 1980 National League Championship Series. I'm Trevor Hauer, and this has been your sports update on High Noon Friday on WCBF 88.9 The Voice and WDVL 89.5 The Inferno. Now, here is your Northern Chautauqua weather update brought to you by Fredonia Radio Systems. Good afternoon, Fredonia. I'm Izzy here with your weather, weather report. Today is going to be a fairly sunny day with our highest temperature being 56 degrees and a few clouds. Tonight will get a little bit chilly, dropping down to 37 degrees. Tomorrow will be the best day for any of your Halloween weekend plans, so our high will be 61 degrees with not a cloud in sight. Tomorrow night will drop to a low of 38 degrees. And finally, finishing up our weekend, Sunday will have a high of 69 degrees, although it will be pretty cloudy and the temperatures will drop to 44 degrees tomorrow night with a slight chance of rain. And we can't forget about Monday, Halloween, and I'd hate to break it to you, but it will be 63 degrees with a high chance of rain and lots of clouds. An unfortunate day for all of you trick-or-treaters out there. This has been your weekend weather, and now back to your hosts. Thank you very much, Cassio, Trevor, and Izzy. We're going to dive right into our weekly segments, and to start us off, we're taking it to the sport fort with... How can I help you? (sighs) You know what they say. Another day, another dollar. Welcome back to the Sport Fort. My name is Sarah, and how can I help you? Yeah, I know you probably think this is another one of those weekend recap episodes where I do nothing but complain. But little do you know, you're in my back pocket. And I'm at work. It's about 10 a.m. right now, and I started my shift and ship from store. Basically, I'm the personal shopper for the people who order online. I go grab their item off the shelves, box it up, put a shipping label on it, and make a pile for the FedEx driver to grab. At least I don't have to deal with any customers, am I right? Shop, scan, grab a box, tape the box, fill the box, scan again, print the shipping label, close the box up, and repeat. And after about four hours, that job's done. I just got back from my lunch break, and guess what I'm doing? Climbing a ladder. Because Karen, 
wants all of the summer stuff that she suspended super high up in the stock room back down. Like, come on, Karen, you couldn't have thought this through before you had me put it all back last week. So I climb up the ladder, and guess what? I can't even reach the items that she wants me to grab. That's what Karen gets for sending the shortest employee into the tallest stock room. You know, my job may suck, but I am not a quitter. So what did I do? I ran back out onto the sales floor and I grabbed one of those long metal stick things with a hook on the end that the apparel associates used to get the clothes down from the top level. I brought it back into the stock room and I climbed the ladder with it. Yeah, it kind of felt like a balancing act, but what else was I supposed to do? Well, I get to the top level of the ladder and I've got this big metal rod in my hand that I'm sticking straight up and I'm just clanging around at all the beams in the stock room until clothes keep falling down onto my head. A pretty messy way to make this happen, but hey, I got the job done. I cleaned up my laundry pile from the stockroom floor and it was time to move on to something else. My climbing was finally done for the day, so it was time to go back to being a supervisor, which meant barking orders and telling people what to do. We are gonna go over to the Pepsi cooler. I had about 10 brand new cashiers just standing around with their arms crossed. So of course I had to go up to each one individually and be like, oh, you can do that and I guess you can do this. Yeah, you hear that? That's the sound the counter makes when there's security sensors left on it. And you'd think that maybe these new hires would be curious and be like, hey, why is the counter making that sound? I actually thought it was kind of funny that nobody was bothered by it. Like, really, you're gonna sit there and listen to that? So I waited and waited until finally, the cashier turned around and goes, is there any way to make that stop? Well, yeah, obviously there's a way to make that stop. I would have quit by now if there wasn't. Well, you can enjoy this live clip of me falling asleep to this sound while I go show the cashier where the security sensors belong. Well, I guess it's time for my favorite time of the night. It's time to count the cash drawers and figure out which cashier messed up today. Yeah, which drawer is short and who am I gonna have to yell at tomorrow morning? There's always that one person who doesn't know how to count change. Like how did you become a cashier when you don't even know that a penny is worth one cent and a nickel's worth five? Well, anyway, you better have already brought your final purchases to the cash registers for a fast and easy checkout because we've already been closed for 10 minutes. We'll catch you back here next Friday, live from the Sport Fort on WCVF FM, the voice of Fredonia. Thank you. Next up is Just Me Unplugged. Hello, everyone. This is Anna, and I welcome you to this week's installment of Just Me Unplugged, the only High Noon Friday segment that explores the frenzy depths of the college student's mind, because who really knows what goes on in there? It's also probably one of the first to be pretentious enough to do in the form of poetry, but as always, I digress. So anyway, today we're gonna be talking about grief again, grief over the loss of a friendship. Whether it be due to just losing touch with each other over time, or something more dramatic, it's never been an especially nice experience for someone to have to go through. As with all topics I discuss on here, this is actually something I've gone through myself, quite recently in fact. That being said, I encourage you to channel your own similar experiences through this week's piece. In doing so, maybe you can receive that seemingly elusive element of clarity that everyone seems to talk so much about, but really, no one knows what the heck it actually feels like. Anyways, without further stalling, here it goes. You were probably expecting some sort of sob story disguised as a poem over a sad piano track. And yeah, I could do that, but I'm not. Gonna paint him as the only one to blame 
for our friendship ending. Instead, I'm gonna recount that one time when I took us out on a midnight drive, one rainy spring night, and I needed to turn the car around. So in lazy want of a shortcut, I drove through some muddy grass and got our asses stuck for the better part of an hour until a tow truck came and I had to pay 160 bucks just to be towed two feet back onto the soaked city street. Yeah, it was pretty cringe, but I look back on it fondly and realize we may have been built on teenage immaturity and angst, but also on inside jokes, self-discovery, and mutual growth. I mean, maybe we outgrew each other, or maybe we both just changed too much. Maybe I was too sensitive, and maybe he was too sarcastic. What I do know is that whatever the case, I'll miss him. I also know we're better off apart. After all, there comes a time when toxicity outweighs nostalgic sparks. And so let this be the start of something greater than the ending story of us. And there you have it, folks. You know, it's true that losing a friendship in a lot of ways is like losing a romantic relationship and can sometimes feel even worse. I mean, there were irreplaceable memories my friend and I made with each other, things we told each other that we would never tell anyone else. But there are also times when I can only think about the things that went wrong between us, the things that he did wrong. But I know that no amount of ranting to my friends about how dirty he did me, or how he's the worst person to have ever walked the face of the planet, will make me a better person at the end of the day. Ultimately, I understand that our friendship may not have worked out in the end, but there's a reason we became friends in the first place. And I don't want to feel bitter about the situation anymore. I just want to look at it for what it is and learn from it. I mean, yeah, it's perfectly normal to feel rage and sadness and regret towards losing a friendship, but it's also perfectly necessary to move on and go forward. And so that said, I'm Anna, and this has been another installment of Just Me Unplugged. Be sure to tune in next Friday so we can keep exploring the frenzy depths of the college student's mind. See you then. Thank you for a very cool segment. Last but not least, we have the local lowdown, Scamata. Hey guys, it's Alex with the local lowdown here at Amityville Music Hall, and I'm standing here with Scamata. Do you guys want to introduce yourself? What's going on? We're Scamata. I'm Ryan, guitar and vocals. I'm Hanson on drums. I'm Fish on bass and vocals. Sweet. Thank you guys so much for talking to me today. So you guys formed, you know, over 10 years ago. Uh, and you guys took a, a bit of a break and then you reformed. Uh, what brought you guys back out of dormancy? Uh, well, you know, it all started when our boy Hans on the drums hit us up in 2019 and said we wanted to give it another go. Me and Ryan were itching to play for years, so we said, hell yeah, let's give it another chance. I was playing in like these like funk bands and blues bands, classic rock cover bands. No offense to any of that, but I just, the music wasn't hitting. And I read Travis Barker's book on a plane, which was not a good idea because I ended on the chapter where he literally crashes on the plane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was, I don't know, just all of that kind of just got me thinking. I'm like, these guys are my best friends or my brothers, and I don't want to be on stage with anyone else. So, yeah, that's why, that's why I texted them. And I'm like, this needs to happen again. 
and here we are. Well, it's awesome to see you guys back. And, you know, since reforming, you've been releasing a ton of music. You know, you just uh, released a full length called Same Sh Different Year, uh, and a holiday album as well, you know. Uh, what can you tell us about these releases? You know, what was, you know, what was the thinking coming out of Dormancy and, you know, creating this? Yeah, I think SSDY for us, we'll abbreviate SSDY. <laughs> I'll bleep that one. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, that was like, we knew that that was our, our comeback album, what people would be hearing uh, for the first time, hearing any, anything from us at all. So I think that album from start to finish is just like a powerful, fast, catchy journey of it's just... like the pinnacle of Scamato. Right, all the sounds that we've... Had in the years past, jazzed up a little bit with a little new touch. Um, and the Holiday album was just something that, that we were able to put together quick. That was a lot of fun. We each actually wrote one of the songs. Um, it's the first time we've ever done anything like that. So that was I've literally never wrote anything <laughs> other than the drum part. So yeah, that was pretty cool. So yeah, that, I mean, a lot Lyrics of fun for us. And the music. Now, it, while I was doing my research, we got, you know, an AR, A&R team at the local lowdown. Shout out to Jordan for helping me come up with some of the questions today. Hey, oh. Jordan. <laughs> Shout out to Jordan. You're yeah. the man. And, and one thing that we both couldn't, you know, uh, find an answer to, and we were both very curious, where did the name Skamata come about? You know, it's such a unique name. Explain that. <laughs> Classic, age-old question. Yeah, um, wow. yeah so we, we were in ninth grade, a couple hoodlums in high school, and uh, we decided to start a band. And the, the next class, after we decided to form our little music child, <clears throat> we sit down and our, our English teacher says, all right, today's word of the day is schemata. <clears throat> we looked at each other and we were like, all right, that's, that's, that's the name. <laughs> Except we changed it from a CH to a K because that's more punk rock. Yeah, yeah. of course, so, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, any upcoming plans for Skamato before I let you guys go? Yeah, actually, uh, we'll be playing a bunch of shows. We're doing a big double weekend there with our boys Card Reader, Midfield, and my cousin's girlfriend's house. Check them all out. They're all dope. That's in July. And the last two weekends in July, uh, we're hitting a bunch of places in PA, Jersey, and New York. So check it out. Uh, we'll also be hitting the studio, Landmine Studios. We're going to be doing a four-track EP. We're going in this week, um, and we're working with Pete Zen and Pete Long over at Landmine. All certified bangers, for sure. Uh, <laughs> well, we can't, hear, we can't wait to hear them come out. You know, I'll be very excited personally. Uh, but this has been Alex with The Local Lowdown, and we'll see you in the next field interview. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for the segment. Now let's bring it to Josh with the international news. Good afternoon, folks. I'm your host, Jazzman Josh, with this week's international news. Many of you may be familiar with the blue box that Berea Pasta comes in. The one sporting stripes of green, white, and red. And some may even recognize that box as saying Italy's number one brand of pasta. Despite this branding, a majority of Berea's products that is sold at, is in America actually come from New York and Iowa, not Italy. And the ingredients sourced from other countries are also not from Italy. So what does this mean? Well, Berea Pasta is facing a lawsuit from two Californians who bought the pasta, believing it to be authentic Italian-made pasta. According to the lawsuit, quote, through falsely, misleadingly, and deceptively labeling the products, defendants sought to take advantage of consumers' desire for authentic Italian pasta while cutting costs and reaping the financial benefits of manufacturing the products in the United States of America, end quote. The plaintiffs, Matthew Centaro and Jessica Prost, claim they would not have spent a total of $6 combined on the pasta had they known it was not from Italy. Sinatra had purchased a $2 box of angel hair pasta from a grocery market in San Francisco, while Prost had purchased two boxes of spaghetti from a grocer in Los Angeles, labeled $2 each. Berea claims on their website that they do also produ produce pasta in Italy. Specifically, it's Berea tortellini and Berea oven-ready lasagna, and that there is no difference in the manufacturing or ingredients they use in Italy and in the States. However, it is possible that those blue boxes with the familiar stripes might just be changing up a bit after this lawsuit ends. Did you know Kanye West has his own school? 
an unaccredited Christian private school where students can go for the tuition of $15,000 per year. Well, Donda Academy, named after Yee's mother, is now shutting down for the rest of the academic year after Kanye's anti-Semitic remarks on Twitter. Also, in his interview with Vice on October 11th, Kanye stated that the goal of Planned Parenthood is to, quote, control the Jew population, end quote. Kanye's school closed down yesterday after an email sent to parents on Wednesday that stated, quote, at the direction of our founder, Donda Academy will close for the remainder of the 2022 to 2023 school year effective immediately. Thursday, October 27th, there is no school tomorrow, end quote. Parents who register their children for classes must sign a non-disclosure agreement. Well, that's not all for Kanye's public relations. Throughout the past couple weeks, a number of companies have cut ties with Kanye for his remarks and posts, including Adidas, Gap, and Balenciaga. Elon Musk. Twitter. Need I say more? Elon Musk now more or less owns Twitter. And what's he doing with it? Well, he gave the boot to the CEO, Parag Agrawal, chief financial advisor, Ned Sagal, and the company's top lawyer, Vihaya Gadi. But what exactly are Musk's motives, and what does he aim to do with the platform? Well, in a post of image, in a series of images he had posted Thursday morning, Elon Musk stated, quote, The reason I acquired Twitter is because it is important to the future of civilization to have a common digital town square, where a wide range of beliefs can be debated in a healthy manner without resorting to violence. End quote. His post continues to explain that he believes that traditional media has fueled and polarized politics, exasperating the divide of far-left and far-right parties and creating an unhealthy social media environment. It also appears that Elon Musk wishes to redefine advertising, his post including, quote, I also very much believe that advertising, when done right, can delight, entertain, and inform you. Low-relevancy ads are spam, but highly relevant ads are actually content, end quote. More relevant content could likely mean more collecting people's personal information. Musk's $44 million takeover of Twitter means Twitter will also become a private company in which investors will no longer be able to purchase shares in. Today, the New York Stock Exchange has suspended trading in Twitter's stocks. More Twitter changes to be seen in the near future. All right, folks. I hope you're all ready for the spooky word of the week, because I've been holding on to this one to celebrate Halloween weekend. And we've even got a new theme. Let's hear it. The, the Jazz Man Josh, word of the week, for this week is, oh, for this week is, lycanthrope. That's right, the spooky Jazz Man Josh, word of the week, for this week is lycanthrope. Lycanthrope is synonymous with werewolf, but can also be used to refer to somebody that believes they can turn into a wolf. And fun factoid, um, last week's word of the week, seputral, uh, which means of or relating to a tomb, is actually one of, like, Dictionary.com's top seven Halloween words in a, their blog post today, so that's really cool. Uh, it's great to see that um, my word of the week is having influence beyond the station, right? <clears throat> and with that, I hope you all have a ghoulishly awesome weekend. Be safe out there. Remember to check your candy. And as always, stay warm and be cool. Thanks for the updates. Finally, we have something special for you all that are listening. It's time for trivia, slightly after 12. On this segment, we test the minds of students here on Fredonia's campus for the chance to win glorious prizes. This week, we have three, count them, three wonderful contestants ready to win big by answering some questions. Please, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Travis. Hello, I am John. Hello, I'm Cassio. Hello, guys. We, we've got Koss, a, a trivia returner. Yeah. John, is this your first trivia or your second trivia? It is my first trivia. First trivia and Travis. First trivia. First trivia. We got some new trivia fellas in the room. I'm very excited, honestly. Are you excited, Hunter? I am excited. We always have some beginner's luck yes. when it comes to trivia. We do. We, we have a bit of a streak going on. We so. do. Koss, you're, you're, you're fighting up against a hill here, but we'll see if you can take the gold. <laughs> well, you guys know the drill. First one to shout their name after the question is read. We'll be able to take a shot at answering the question. 
Each question is worth one point, and at the end of the game, the person with the most points will be declared the winner. This week's category is horror. Oh. Dum, bum, ba. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Alrighty. Question number one. Ghost Choir, a cute but spooky little video on YouTube in which a bunch of ghosts harmonize a tune. Which of the following is not a real comment left on this video? Is it A, are the ghosts in this video real? I'm nervous. B, fun fact, ghosts don't kill because when you become a ghost, things become awkward. C, if only my sleep paralysis demons can be this nice and cute. Or D, I guess you could say their talent was to die for. Which of these comments is not a real comment left on the video? Hunter, did you come up with this question? <laughs> nope. <laughs> this is Chloe. Yeah. Chloe's not here today, so we're reading Chloe's questions. We are. They're pretty wacky. John. John. I want to say B. B. Fun fact, ghosts don't kill because when you become a ghost, things become awkward. That is incorrect. That's a real comment That's left on the video. That's a real comment. Yeah. Travis. Travis. I'm going to say C. C. If only my sleep paralysis demons can be this nice and cute. Incorrect. That is a real comment left on the video. I hear so many com- like things about sleep paralysis demons. I would believe that is always on any video. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, I'm going to say D. D. I guess you could say their talent was to die for. Is incorrect. Uh, <laughs> that is a real comment. <laughs> that is also a real comment. Uh, the correct answer was A. Are the ghosts in this video real? I'm nervous. Uh, fun fact, this animation is by Louis Zong, and it has 17 million views on YouTube. I've never heard of it, personally. Hunter, have you heard of this? I have not. You have not. So Chloe's the only one that knows about this, and she's not here. Very unfortunate. High noon <laughs> trivia. <laughs> Question number two. <laughs> Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion is a cute little indie horror game on Steam. What is Spooky? Is A, is Spooky a ghost? B, a spooky skeleton? C, a pumpkin? Or D, a faceless humanoid figure? Jossia. Whoa. Oh. Was that John or Kyle? I don't, I don't know. I think you know how we have to solve this, oh, right, Hunter? Absolutely. Rock, paper, scissors. On three, say out loud for the audience. As well as yes. throw it out. Yeah. yeah. One. Uh, so I'll go rock. I'll say that. Okay, <laughs> okay you know okay. the thing. Rock, rock, paper, scissors. Guys didn't say it. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> John had a rock. Cos had scissors. Yeah. So John gets the win. A, a ghost. That is correct. Yep. <laughs> Spooky's a ghost. <laughs> Uh, fun fact, the game was originally named Spooky's House of Jump Scares, but after a cease and desist letter, a very scary thing, and a long legal <laughs> battle, a very scary thing, it was changed. There's nothing spookier than a lawyer with a pen and paper. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they know stuff. <laughs> they know too many things. It's spooky. All right, question number three. This is an actual trivia question. So We, we, did, we did do some actual trivia questions for y'all instead of our regular stuff. Number three, in the first Friday the 13th film, released in 1980, we were introduced to the classic horror villain Jason. How many people did Jason kill in this film? Is it A, 13, B, 7, C, 3, or D, 0? Travis. Travis. Zero. Zero is correct. That was, that was some classic trivia right there. That was fun, pretty good. Fun fact, Jason only makes a true appearance in the film near the end of the film in sort of a short dream sequence. Yeah. The one who actually committed all the killings, his mother, Pamela, killed nine people in total. That's pretty crazy. Oh, so people still died. Yeah, people yeah, still died. He just didn't do it. He just he didn't yeah. do it. Not at Jason's hand. Yeah. You know? His mother's, though. Yeah, yeah. A loving mother. The Jason family. The Jason family. <laughs> Very protective. Jason Incorporated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, question four. Taking it back to gaming again. Game. Silent Hill, a survival horror game, is said to have set the stage for horror games. In what year did the original Silent Hill come out? Is it A, 1992, B, 1994, C, 1997, or D, 1999? You got 92, 94, 97, and 99. There's a lot of 19. Cause. 94. Incorrect. Ooh. John. John. 97? Incorrect. Ow. 
92. Incorrect. Oh! It was 99? It was 1999. Wow. wow. Orchard, that was spooky. It was no spooky. one got that right. <laughs> <laughs> and no one's very spooky. You know, I'm going to give all the sweeps this time to Spooky from Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. Yeah. Spooky gets those points. That's who gets those points. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Fun fact. Silent Hill is based off a fictitious town called Centralia there in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get up close to the I monitor did. to read it. <laughs> in 1962, there was a fire in the mine. <laughs> Everything's going wrong. In 1962, there was a fire in the mine under Centralia that is still burning today, if it was real, because of all the coal inside. Isn't there a town in Pennsylvania that is actually on fire underground? That's kind of what this is based on? I think so. I think so. One second. Let me switch it up. Town, coal, fire, underground. (laughs) Uh, Centralia mine fire. Yeah. It's a real place. Well, <laughs> <laughs> can I? Can I? Wasn't my question. Yeah. <laughs> can I? Can I get a bad trivia question for Chloe? <laughs> bad trivia points. <laughs> Did she say this was a fictitious town? Yes. If it was real, it is. It, 1962. One second. Yeah, the abandoned coal mines have been burning since at least 1962. Wow. Chloe. Unfortunate. Not Snopes Boy. approved. As not Snopes. You know, we didn't have just the facts this week, so. That's why, honestly. Yeah. We weren't, facts weren't in our minds. Facts weren't in our minds. Chloe was just being silly goofy. Yeah. And, you know, false information is the real terror. It's true. Ah, well, question five. Question five. I was on Wikipedia. Let me go back to the script. <laughs> question five. <laughs> question number five. According to U.S. News, what is the most popular Halloween costume 2022 in New York State. Oh. Is it A, the witch, B, the fairy, C, Stranger Things, trademark, and D, Spider Man, trademark, Spider Man. <laughs> Did you say we have to say our names? <laughs> Travis said his name, and I yep. just looked at him and said Spider Man. <laughs> Travis, go ahead. <laughs> Stranger Things. Stranger Things is incredible. <laughs> really? John. John. Is it Spider-Man? Spider-Man's also incredible. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> is it a witch? The witch is incredible. No! <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know why I looked at you and said Spider-Man. Me either. I thought you accidentally said the answer, so I just went with that. No, no. I was just being... There's a ghost in the room. They're, they're scrambling our minds, yeah. actually. It's from there. It's from the vent. There's a vent open in the ceiling right now since last high noon, so it's been with us for two and a high noons. Yeah. The ghosts in the ceiling are starting to infect the station. Is that an Among Us reference? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Gosh. I refuse to have Among Us on this show. Uh, we should do Among Us trivia one day. God, no. <laughs> Alex, that's pretty sus. <laughs> the correct answer was fairies. Fun fact. <laughs> U.S. News broke the most popular costumes by each state, but also gave the most popular in general across the U.S. That one goes to the witch. So. I, I wrote the uh, fun fact very weird. Yes, the, across the entire United States, the top is witch. Yes. But, but in New York, New York it it's fairy. fairy. Why? Good question. Yeah. Dude. You don't want to be a fairy? No. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be I a mean, fairy. Dude, like, I'll be I bent, assume... Cos, I think you'd like, be a great fairy. Thank you. I like the wand and stuff? Yeah. Yo, I almost said a bad word. Casio <laughs> Tooth Fairy? I'll be the great fairy. <gasps> Cos, can you be the Tooth Fairy for Halloween? Yeah. Uh, uh, the Dwayne Halloween. Johnson one or the Larry the Cable guy one? <laughs> <laughs> Either or. I'll let you choose that. Cool. be a dream come true. <laughs> All right, question six. The Old Stone House in Washington, D.C., is to, oh. <laughs> Man, that ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll it back. Roll it back. Come on. Question six. <laughs> the, the, st- the station ghost has got to stop it. He's got to. Yeah. The Old Stone House in Washington, D.C. is considered to be one of the most haunted places in our nation's capital. In fact, there are several spirits inhabiting the home. Supposedly. Which of these? Yes, yeah, supposedly. Allegedly. Uh, which <laughs> of the following is not one of the spirits said to be in the home? 
Is it A, a little girl with curly hair who runs up and down the stairs? B, a man with a long blonde hair wearing a new jacket, specified new. Uh, C, a British soldier wearing the wrong color jacket. Or D, a lady dressed in brown who stands by the fireplace. <laughs> That's a good question. We got pretty good costumes here for our ghosts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, we Any really guesses? stumped them. <laughs> no one's going to try? Could oh. you repeat the answers? <laughs> <laughs> a, a little girl with curly hair who runs up down the stairs. B, a man with long blonde hair wearing a new jacket. C, a British soldier wearing the wrong color jacket. Or D, a lady dressed in brown stands by the fireplace. John. John. C. That would be correct. Thank you. I didn't want to repeat those again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, uh, want to say the fun fact for that one? I, I think I can say the fun fact. Uh, fun fact. The traffic lights don't hang above the intersection in, in Washington, D.C. Instead, they are at the side of the streets, which posed to be quite... Con <laughs> what is this? This is also from Chloe, I'm guessing. She's currently in D.C., so... Yes, it makes a sense. Bit, a little bit of... Let's try that again. Let's try and decipher what she is saying. The traffic lights in Washington, D.C. don't hang above the intersection. Okay. Instead, they are at the sides of the streets, which is quite confusing for Chloe and the rest of the leader that went mm -hmm. when they got there at 11.30 p.m. on Wednesday night. LOL. <laughs> Capital Bull. P.S. I miss you guys, and I can't wait to come back to Fred. Smiley face. Smiley face. <laughs> can I can I get a poorly written fun fact for Henry <laughs> Chloe? I had to decipher that one. I'm giving her a posed point. I feel like I feel like we had to like pull out the Ouija board to figure that one out. <laughs> Are you suggesting that Chloe is the station ghost? Right no, now? Chloe's not a ghost. No, Chloe's just a goofy. goofy She's just ghost. in Washington D.C. Yeah. yeah. I I think there is a ghost in the station, though. You remember I agree. Chris Sill once, like, broke a Ouija board in the station? I think we've been cursed ever since. I didn't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> Fun fact. Chris Sill broke a Ouija board and now we're cursed. Well, well, well. What, are, what are the standings looking like before <laughs> I get to question seven? All right. Now that we're stewing on that. Last place. You know, this is not bonus points or anything. Uh -huh. In last place is Casio. Nothing. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Third place is Travis with one. Nice. Yeah. Second place is John with two. <laughs> and in first place is Spooky with three. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Spooky. Spooky's killing us all. That's really yep. funny. Oh, my Spooky God. Spooky's sweeping. Spooky is sweeping. But it still could be anyone's game. We have six questions it left. Could. Plus the bonus points, of course. Question number seven. Fredonia was actually home and host to its very own super spooky movie last year. The Cryptic Cast versus the Gooby Ganker. Well, the Gooby Ganker doesn't say any actual words. He does make a ton of goopy sounds. What were these sounds made out of? Was it A, a wash bucket filled with watermelon pulp? B, goop. Copious amounts of goop. C, High Noon Friday producer Hunter Halterman going absolutely ham on the microphone with a ton of sound effects. <laughs> or D, approximately three old sweatshirts soaked in water and dish soap. Travis. Is it D? D, the sweatshirts? Yeah. That is incorrect. A hey, good idea, though. Yeah. Yeah. We probably should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> John. John. I want to say A. A, a wash bucket filled with watermelon pulp? Yeah. That is incorrect. Also, another good idea. Very messy, though. Yeah. <sighs> Would not be good for the microphones. It might be wrong, but because they just had so much of it, mm -hmm. was it like the, the green goop stuff that they made? Hunter, I'm gonna have to ask you to give another point to Spooky. <laughs> it was C. Come on, it was High Noon Friday producer. I thought that was too Hunter meta. Hal Hunter Halterman going absolutely ham on the microphone. With a lot of effects. With a lot of effects. <laughs> so, fun fact while he didn't play the role in the movie, he did play the voice a little bit. He also helped with audio in the movie and received the awards Worst Audio Boy and Highest Tips. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Some pretty good vocalization I will not be doing right now. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. Check out the movie tonight, 8 p.m., QMG24. Good plug, good plug. Thank you, thank you. Question eight. 
Speaking of High Noon Friday, producer, Hunter, Alterman, me. <laughs> Which of the following horror movies has he, I, actually watched? Thanks, Hunter. You're welcome. <laughs> Is it A, The Shining, B, Paranormal Activity, C, Hereditary, or D, Get Out? John. John. I want to say C. C, Hereditary? Yes. Were you there? No. <laughs> <laughs> that That's the correct answer. Oh, spooky. I, I just, that movie's so out there that I only know people who have seen the movie know of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I know of it. I haven't seen it. Oh, my bad. Yeah, and that like was a, just my assumption. You're like a spooky buff, though. Yeah. Yeah. You like all the spook. Yeah. You're like on the same plane as you sell. Too much spook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact. Uh, that movie that movie was truly something. It was all right. That, it's true. That yeah. one, yep. <laughs> That's your fun fact. It was truly something. Your fun fact was five words, Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my hereditary God. Was a, hereditary was the movie ever. <laughs> I, I had a group of friends who watched it, and I was, like, on the couch facing opposite of the TV because I hate scary movies. Mm-hmm. And just hearing that movie and seeing their reaction to it, I already didn't like it. Yeah. Well, talking about hating scary movies and High Noon producers, High Noon Friday producer Alex Irwin is deathly afraid of horror movies. Not a fan of them at all. During which of these horror movies did he quite literally jump so much his bucket of popcorn flew across the movie theater? Was it A, Nope, B, The Nun, C, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or D, The Boy? John. John. I want to say B. B, The Nun? Yes. That is incorrect. Travis. Travis. I'm going to say The Boy. The Boy is correct. Mm -hmm. It was The Boy. The Boy, The Boy, fun fact, yes, Alex did throw the popcorn up in the air. It made quite the mess. It's not even that bad of a horror movie. No. <laughs> it's not. Alex is just a silly goose. Yeah, he like like the boy, like he he did his thing and like, you know, he emerged as the boy and I jumped. I'm not I don't want to spoil it even though it's like a six year old movie. So I was just walking across the hallway and Alex went, ah! Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Except like through a wall. Like yeah. He came through the wall and I was like, ah and then my popcorn went everywhere and all my <laughs> friends made fun of me. It was really sad. I hate Very unfortunate. Movie. Anyway, question ten. Question ten. Stop laughing. <laughs> In Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter had the ability to smell very well. Nice. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> According to Lecter, what kind of perfume did Clarice wear but forgot to put on the day she visited him the first time? I'm going to try to pronounce Oh, my these. God. Is this Chloe's question? Yes. She really expected us to pronounce any of she these. She knew she wasn't here, so she didn't have to read it. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. I'm glad I'm not reading this one. Is it A, Ve Saint Laurent Opium? <laughs> B, Lard du Temps? <laughs> C, Revlon Ciara? Oh my god. Or D, Revlon Charlie? <laughs> Travis. Yep. Uh, was it B? Would you like to say the say the <laughs> guess for us? <laughs> Can I read it? <laughs> it is. Uh, it is. B is correct. L'air de temps. I talked about this movie <laughs> on my show that was right before this. Oh wow! <laughs> yep. All right. Well. <laughs> oh. Trivia. <laughs> Trivia. Let's go. You really massacred all those perfumes. Yep. Except for Revlon Charlie. Good job. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Proud of you. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not a French guy. <laughs> I don't think no. <laughs> fun fact. Uh, Actually, it's French. fun fa fa. <laughs> what? Chloe, <laughs> what is going on here, dude? <laughs> A lot of actors and actresses actually turned down roles in the movie due to the intense and disturbing subject matter. For instance, Michelle Pfeiffer was the first choice to play Clarice, and Sean Connery was the first choice for Hannibal Lecter, but both declined the roles. Weak. Boo. Alex, have you even seen the movie? Nope. Nope. Then stop booing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not booing the movie. I'm booing the actors. We're booing Sean Connery and Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. I think you should still watch the movie. 
I agree. It's not that scary. Okay. I think we should. I, I, I also haven't watched it, so we should watch it together. Yeah. We can. We can. You comfort guys can each other as it's spooky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can hold hands. I'll stuff. throw my popcorn in the air and I'll catch it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the entire bucket. <laughs> Question eleven. <laughs> Question 11. Every year, the Fredonia Radio Systems eBoard chooses a theme to base their costumes around for the Halloween lock-ins. We whittled it down to two options this year, and we chose Cartoon Network. What was that other choice, though? Was it A, food, B, Stranger Things, C, Nickelodeon, or D, villains? John. John. I want to say Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon is incorrect. Great idea, though. Travis. Travis. I'm going to say villains. Villains is Incorrect. Casio, e board member. Casio, <laughs> <laughs> because it's correct. Ooh, do I remember to a few weeks ago? Were you paying attention? <laughs> oh, was I? Uh, could, could I get the <laughs> remaining options? Uh, it was food and stranger things, Rilla. What was that second option? We whittled it down to two. Is the point for Casio or is the point for Spooky? Digging through his brain. Stranger things. <laughs> we get. A point for spooky. <laughs> I couldn't remember. <laughs> Casio. You're, I'm telling you, Cell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was food. It was food. It was food. Remember? I thought we got rid of that one like immediately. No, <laughs> that was the second option. It was wow. either Cartoon Network or food, and we had to vote on it. Well, I'm glad we went with Cartoon Network. <laughs> it was five to four. What do you mean? That's so sad. Anyways. I would have loved to dress up in a hot dog costume. Yeah, see? I feel yeah, that's big old weenie. Common, like. <laughs> Fun fact. Alex brought up the food idea two years in a row, and each year food came in second place in the votes. It was a good run while it lasted. Rest in peace, food. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. You know when it is fortunate, though? What? Question 12. Oh! Ooh. Well, it's, you know. Wrong. All right, bring it back to gaming again. Because <laughs> we're you know, pro-gamers here. Yeah, exactly. Horror is movies, gaming, anything you can think of. Yeah. Gamers. What is the most played horror game on Steam? Steam specifically. Is it A, Amnesia, The Dark Descent? B, Dead by Daylight? C, Phasmophobia? Or D, The Darkest Dungeon? Travis. Oh, might need another rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, that's there. a rock, paper, scissors right there. Rock. rock. <laughs> scissors. Oh. <laughs> That was a rock. Booyah. All right, Travis. Phasmophobia. Incorrect. <laughs> what? Are you serious? That was what I was going to guess. I'm glad I lost what? that. <laughs> Great game, though. Can you present the options again? Casio. <laughs> Casio? Dead by Daylight. Correct. Yes! <laughs> wow. What a... What a... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that was so unfortunate. So, so right. Dead by Daylight sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah well. but Phasmo, Phasmo is the jankiest game I've ever played. That's it's, why I play <laughs> it. Probably because it's garbage. How long has Dead by Daylight been out? Th- Longer than Phasmophobia. That's probably why. Yeah. By like, like seven years. That's no. also why I was thinking Dark uh, Amnesia, because that's like a very old game as far as I can remember. Dead by Daylight release. June 14th, 2016. Wow. What's that fun fact, Hunter? Uh, give me one second. I'm searching up Phasmo. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Do you want me to run the read the fun fact? Uh, no, I would like to. Okay. Uh, yeah, Phasmo is 2020. Oh. Uh, yeah. So recent. 2016 versus 2020. Yeah. yeah the f- Four time, years. Time can play a factor. Yeah. Uh, fun fact. Okay, so look. Uh, <laughs> this website <laughs> is pretty janky, okay? The website that I got it off on... Not very good, I don't think. Number one, I lied, is actually Wallpaper Engine. (laughs) Oh. No, that makes sense. Under the horror category. Oh, that doesn't make sense. (laughs) Yeah, so I that's not a game, so I took it out. So (laughs) Runner Up was Dead by Daylight. Yeah. Um, It's a pretty garbage website. Number 14 was Cookie Clicker. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Again for the horror category. Can so. I change my answer? Uh, can I can I do wallpaper inch? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well then, look at look at the time. We do such good time with trivia, don't we, Hunter? We it's like twelve fifty six. I do have to ask though, in terms of our standings, in terms of our results, I'd like to know who got where as he adds up the board. I'm buying him time. It's spooky. 
So yeah, Chris broke a Ouija board in the station. I think we're cursed from that. What was it? was that like freshman year? That was no, that was that was sophomore year. Wait, the Chris. Oh, Chris Sill. Yeah, like uh, the orange hair, kind of yeah, shortish. Short. Yeah, okay. big video person. Yeah, yeah, yeah Chris. Nice. He broke a Ouija board and threw it out. Pretty sure we've been cursed ever since. Cool. Did Plus the ghost coming right? out of the vent up there. Yeah. Why yeah. is the vent open? Uh, see, we came into uh, High Noon Friday last week, and the vent was open. It wasn't open the day prior, so it fell down, like, in the middle of the night, but uh, we just haven't gotten it fixed yet. There's a work order in for yeah. it, though. But yep. someone crawled in or someone crawled out? Or a ghost. Yes. Yes. Spooky. Spooky, Spooky got out. I wonder if we can find the answer in the vent of who won, though. You might be able to. Let you can look. definitely find who came last. <laughs> <laughs> who came last? <laughs> in last place is Chloe. With a negative two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, with point? a bad trivia point and a posed point. <laughs> <laughs> Don't include posed in your things for me to read. Yes. I hate the word posed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Hunter. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, next up is Casio. He got a point. Yeah. Congratulations. Nice job. And then in third place, this is where it gets true. Ooh. Travis oh, with two points. Two points. Dang. And now, <laughs> this is what we are all waiting for here, okay? In first place, we have, with five big old points, Spooky. Yep. <laughs> You know, usually after trivia, I talk to the person who won, uh, how they feel about trivia, but Spooky's not here with us. But congratulations, Spooky. You know, yeah. this is the second time I've lost high noon trivia this semester to a dead person. <laughs> <laughs> the other, yeah, the other one yeah, was the... Yeah, the, the Oh, was it uh, the Nintendo guy? Gunpai. The janitor. Oh, the janitor. That's yeah. right. Oh, my God. That is so unfortunate. <laughs> Well, how did you guys like trivia? You know, at least for our I first time. This. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Was it, yeah fun? it was fun. Yeah. That is, how about you, Koss, as a returner? Uh, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a there was a good amount of answers that I that I like knew but mm. didn't jump on, and I I should have. Yeah. But, eh, yeah. Oh, the well, amount of joy in your face when you got one right was. I know, because I was like, <laughs> I he was reading it, and I was like, I'm so sure. <laughs> that it is dead by daylight. But you guys answered so quick that I was like, oh, they got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, to be fair, we you. didn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for coming on to Trivia. And I think it's about time we send it back to our host. Don't you think, Hunter? I think so. All right. That wraps it up for this week's broadcast of High Noon Friday. Thank you for joining us, and make sure to tune in next week, same time, same place. High Noon Friday has been brought to you on WCVF 88.9 FM, The Voice, and WDVL 89.5, The Inferno, on the web. High Noon Friday is assembled through collaboration with students from Fredonia Radio Systems and Dr. Daly's Audio Production 2 class. Our producers and scriptwriters are Alex Irwin, Chloe Kowalik, and Hunter Halterman. Board operation is performed by Hunter Halterman. News is presented and read by Casio Fonseca and Joshua Ribikov. Sports is prepared and read by Trevor Howard. And weather is prepared and read by Izzy and Zena. Tune in next week for another great edition of I New Friday. I'm Alex Irwin. And I'm Hunter Halterman. Thanks for listening and make sure to tune in next week at the same time, same place. Have a great Halloween weekend for Donia. Get out there and trick or treat. Get some candy. <laughs> <laughs>